Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, I thank you for these times. Father, I thank you for these times that you have allowed me to do this again. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing, your power. I thank you for the strength. I thank you for everything. I thank you for the breath that I breathe today. Father, I bless your name. Father, I love you. Father, I confess your name today within me and towards my brothers and sisters. Father, I pray for those who are struggling right now, Father. Lord, I pray, help them. Be there for them, Lord, Father. Father, I pray for those who are being battered, for those who are being abused right now. Father, I pray, send some help, send some relief, oh, Father, that they might be, they might feel your presence, Father. I pray for your comfort, for those who are struggling, for those who are suffering, for those who are going through a lot of things right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Be there for them. Help them. Father, I pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. For those who are struggling to understand your word. For those who, can't, who haven't got the ability to read. For those who haven't got the, the strength, the grace, sorry, the grace to know. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Equip them. Empower them, Lord. Pour out your grace upon their lives. Father, help them to understand your word, Father. Help them to know you, the only true God and Jesus whom you have sent. Father, I pray for myself. Continue to equip me, Lord. Father, I repent for procrastinating, not doing your work as I should do. Father, I repent for my weaknesses. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, strengthen me in the inner man that I might be able to do your work according to your will on a daily basis. Father, I pray for anything, any of my struggles, Lord, teach me, show me how to overcome the pain, the struggles, the weaknesses. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that I get be rooted continuously in your word. That I, you will protect me, Lord. That you will keep me in your will, in your grace, in your word, rooted and grounded. Father, I pray, protect me from error. Father, I pray, protect me from misunderstanding and all of that father i pray in the name of jesus keep me in your grace keep me in your will keep me in the straight and narrow that i will only do what you call me to do Father, i thank you for giving me the grace and the energy keep me in your face lord father father i want i don't want to be anywhere else but doing your will and doing your work according to your grace that you have given me father I pray the same for my brothers and my sisters. Those who are watching, those who will be watching after, and those that are destined to receive a word this morning. Father, I pray that they will not fall into religion, that they will know you, the only true God, for to know you is everything. Father, I pray for those who will be watching. Father, I pray for them in the name of Jesus. I pray that you touch them, that you help them to understand your word. Father, one of the challenges that we struggle with is many are reading your word, but they don't understand. Father, I pray, give them understanding. Like you said in Luke chapter 24, you open their mind that they might comprehend the scriptures. Father, I pray, be our strength. Open our understanding. Open their understanding that they might understand your scriptures, that they will come to believe and to obey what they believe. Father, I pray, give us the ability to believe your word, to put your word in practice. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. There's so much struggle around the world. There's so much struggle in your body. Father, I pray. 
Let your Holy Spirit flow. Let your Holy Spirit. Father, I, I stand in a gap for my brothers and sisters today. Help us to change. Help us to renew our minds. Help us to think new creation. Help us to think that we are a new people. Help us to believe that we are a new people. That the past has been done away with. That we are new people in you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Help us to be those new people who believe your word and who are willing to do your word. Father, I pray. Help us. Help us. I come before you guys today. Um, have you ever been in a place where you know what you should do? You know what you should do, but you haven't got the power to do it. Have you been in a place whereby you believe the word, you believe what God is saying, but you just can't manage. You just can't, you just don't find the energy. You just don't find the ability to do what God has called you to do. Have you been in the position that you know what you should do? But you can't do it because there's something in you that that is just making you weak. You feel you're struggling and it's not working. <clears throat> Have you been in the place whereby you believe the word? You believe the word. But you don't. You're struggling. You see, Christ is real. Christianity is real. Hallelujah. But he has to become a reality in our lives. He has to become a living reality in our lives. Yes, it happens that you know what you should do, but you don't have the power to execute what you should do. You know. You know it's truth. You know the word of God is truth. You try, but you can't. You try again and you can't. You try again and you can't. It's not easy. But God. As you try and keep on trying. Don't stop. No matter what. Yes is not easy. Yes is difficult. And then you continue to struggle. And then at some point you pretend. You begin to pretend that, wow, yeah, uh, you don't. No, don't pretend. Don't fall into the category of people who wants to be seen as though they do it. No. Humble yourself. You go on your knees and say, God, I am tired of playing church. God, I am tired to come into the same building and be prayed over the same all the time. The same people get prayed over all the time. You've been prayed over. Lord, I am tired. I want to have the reality of who you are. If you've been into that place, welcome. I pray the next few words will help you. We're going to read from Proverbs. We're going to start from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 16. The book of Proverbs chapter 23, verse 16. It says, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. A righteous man, a righteous, made righteous in Christ, might fall seven times. Don't stay down. You'll rise again. Yes, it's not going to be easy. Jesus didn't say it was going to be easy. Peter, the devil has decided decide to sift you as wheat. Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Mm. But I have prayed that your faith don't fail. Don't give up on your belief. Don't give up on your faith. 
Don't give up no matter how many times you fail. Because you are a new creation. Job. Let's read Job. Job chapter 5 verse 19. The book of Job chapter 5 verse 19. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse 19. Because we need to see that the battle has been an ongoing battle. In the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 19, he says, He shall deliver you in six troubles. He shall deliver you in six troubles. Yes, in seven, no evil shall touch you. He shall deliver you for six trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. He shall deliver you in six troubles. Yes, in seven, no evil shall touch you. Though you might struggle, though you frustrated, the Lord will deliver you. You believe, but you have no power to put in practice what you believe. You fall again. You fall again. You fall again. You believe, but you fall again. You believe, but you struggle again. You believe, but you fall again and again and again. And you're asking why somebody, it looks like somebody is doing it right. It looks like this one seems to be going with God. Why am I struggling? Why am I falling again? Why am things not working? Why? Don't give up. Though you fall seven times, no evil will touch you. Because there's learning in the process. Whatever you fail upon, whatever you're struggling with, ask the Lord to show you what in your struggle, what lesson God has for you while you're struggling. What makes the thing that you're struggling with? What is the lesson? God will show you something in the failure. The key to success is sometimes locked in in the failure. You fail so many times that you become successful at failure. Many men of God fallen. Many times. Though the righteous fall seven times, they don't stay down. You get up. You get up again. You don't know why your family is disrupted. You don't know why everything seems to be pear-shaped. You don't know why, you know, this one don't believe and that one believe and everybody's arguing. And you don't know why. Go on your knees. Hold on to the word that has you have received. Go on your knees. Don't give up. No matter how bleak things look, no matter how dark things look, shine the light brighter. The thicker the darkness, shine that light even brighter. Meaning what? Hold on. Yes, abide in him. Keep on abiding in him. Don't give up. The worst thing is that you fall and stay down. He will get you to come. To rise again. You keep struggling. You keep believing. You keep falling. You keep believing. You keep struggling. You read. You read the word. You know what the word says. But you have no power. To believe. You have no power. It's not working. What's going on? You keep believing. You keep hating. You believe you have anger issues. You believe you have fear issues. You believe, but yet you know you are a new creation in Christ. Yet you know. You know that Christ has delivered you. You know that you have been saved. You're like a, a child who has a billion pound in a bank, but still a child can't touch it. It's like, what's going on? You know what you should do, but you're struggling to do it. 
But yet you know you're a new creation. My Lord. Paul had an issue. Paul had the same issue. In Romans chapter 7. In Romans chapter 7 verse 13. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandments might become exceedingly sinful. Sometimes when you're going through those weak things, it's so that they can be seen as they are. Whatever you're suffering with, what addiction that you're suffering with, whatever you're going through, those things that you're struggling with, look at them and see how sinful they are and look at them and appeal to God. Appeal to God. I say, yes, you recognize that sinful character, that sinful habit. You recognize it for what it is. But know that you are a new creation. Even though you see it, believe what God says about you. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold on the sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what is what for what I will to do, what I want to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. You hate doing what you're doing. You're struggling. You you're tired of doing going back to the same vomit. You're tired of going back. You know you are a new creation. We're gonna talk about it. I'm building up, I'm building up, I'm building up. You know you are a new creation in Christ. You know. You know. Sister Ruth, thank you. The, the, the scripture goes from Romans 7, 13. You can put all the way to Romans 7, 25. So 13 to 25. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then... Verse 16, if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So the problem is not you, it's sin that dwells in you. Sin dwells in our mortal bodies. The problem is not you. You need to, my, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will show you the difference between you and sin in you. You see, your spirit, hallelujah, your spirit was born again, was renewed. But your spirit dwells in a temple that has been cleansed. Sin dwells in you. In those areas, that's where weakness is. But your spirit can look at sin. It's like you, you have to almost separate yourself. And you say, wow. Verse 17. But is, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwell in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. So you need to make a distinction between the real you and your flesh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, amen, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, the real me, but to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I want to do, that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it. But sin that dwell in me. He repeats it. It's sin that dwell in you. Hallelujah. I find that a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. The real me. The inward me. I want to do what is right. I want to serve God. I want to believe his word. I want to do what is right. 
Verse 23, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body, body, body of sin? Verse 25, here's the solution. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. When those weakness come, weaknesses come, when those issues arise, remember this, remember this. You are in your creation. You are a different person. You have been born again. Hallelujah. You need to remember that. So you don't sit down. It is not you, yes. It's sin that dwells in you. <sighs> Hallelujah. Because if you don't make that difference, you will not understand the power that we're going to be talking about. Hallelujah. You are a new creation. I want you to believe you are a new creation. Though you might struggle, though you're going through some issues, remember, you are a new creation. When were you made a new creation? We're going to Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. But as usual, I'm going to read a few verses before that. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 11. We're going to start from verse 11, building up. See, so Galatians chapter 6 verse 11. See with, see with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. The same Paul who was struggling. Hallelujah. The same Paul who was struggling the flesh. This is what he says. See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as I desire to make, to make a good showing in the flesh. These will compel you to be circumcised only that they may so they may not suffer persecution to the cross of Christ verse 13 but not even those who are circumcised keep the law it's hard but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh but god for, forbid that i should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I repeat this. Now you need to get this. This verse is key. Verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of Christ. Why do we boast in the cross of Christ? Why Christ died for you? He died for you to crucify that old nature that can't stop sinning. He died for you to crucify that old nature that cannot stop sinning. Yes, absolutely. Forget the former things. How do you forget the former things? By recognizing that you are dead to those things. You forget the former things by recognizing that Christ's cross has crucified the old you. Hallelujah. You died in him. You were crucified in him. Amen. And you are risen with him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. You died in him. You were crucified in him. And you rose again with him. That's how, that's how you know. That the things, the former things will be forget, forget, forgotten. It says it. I boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified. Past tense has been crucified. Amen. Verse 15. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. You are a new creation in Christ. 
In Christ, you were crucified and in Christ, you were made new. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in your life, you were crucified in Christ. In Christ, you were crucified. In Christ, you were made new. Amen? In Christ, you were crucified. In Christ, you were made new. You became a new creation. And you became a new creation. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Two Corinthians chapter five, verse fifteen. Okay, and he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Remember, the flesh was always a problem. So the Bible says, the word of God says, I don't look at my sister Ruth according to the flesh, meaning according to the mistakes, according to the faults, according to the flaws. We don't look at each other according to our past. In Christ, you were crucified. In Christ, your old self that you're struggling with has been dealt with. Now you need the grace of God to believe the word of God so that you can put that in practice. In Christ, in Christ, hallelujah. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet, we know him no more, no longer. Why? Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the key to being a new creation is being in Christ. Ruth, Sister Ruth put 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 21. We're going to read the whole context. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from, from verse 15 to verse 21. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. We're going to get that word inside of us. We're going to, we're going to read that word. We're going to believe that word until we begin to do it. We're going to read it. We're going to believe it until we begin to do it together. Amen. Yes. Thank you, sister. We're going to read that word. We're going to believe that word until we begin to do the word of God. He will give us the grace. Different people at different pace. Different times. Some are ahead. Some are not ahead. Some are stagnant. But keep believing until you get the grace to do it. I repeat this. Keep believing the word until you receive the grace to apply it in your life. Because by faith you are a new creation. I am a new creation. I don't look at you anymore according to the past, according to the past failures. I don't look at you anymore according to the wrong things that you have done. The key is to believe deep in our hearts what Jesus has achieved on the cross already. Why do we have to gain more knowledge if we don't believe the basic one that we should be believing already? We, there's no point having more knowledge and more and more and more without putting in practice what we believe already. What we believe already is enough. Yes, keep believing until you have the grace to apply it. Keep believing the word. Don't give up. Keep believing the word until... God gives you the grace to apply it in your life. That's where we struggle. We read the word, we believe the word, but you haven't got the grace to apply it. So change delays. Change becomes difficult. None of the words that I'm, we're reading today is new to you. But we pray for divine insight. We pray for divine revelation of that word that we can apply it. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, verse 17. 
all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have passed away. We need to believe that. No matter what, how many times the enemy or your flesh calls you to go back in your past. Hold on to the present and to the future. Because you are now a new creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Now all things are, are of God who has reconciled us to himself, to Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. That, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing, amen, not imputing the trespasses, not recognizing. God, God has decided to forget about your past. No, no imputing that, not putting that in your account anymore. Your trespasses, the things that you've done before. God has decided in himself to forget your past. Don't go back in your past. God wants you to forget the former things. Because he has forgotten the former things. God was in your past, his present, and he's in your future. Hold on to what he's saying to you now. Stop going back in your past. Stop having the triggers from your past. Hold on to what God is saying now. Believe it and ask him for the grace to apply it in your life. We don't want to become unbelieving believers. We believe, but we walk in unbelief. So verse 19. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing, not accounting, not putting in their account their trespasses to them and has committed us to the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, verse 20, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Amen. Verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ, in him. Jesus died your death, that you might have eternal life. Jesus died your death, that you might become a new creation. Jesus died your death, that you might live his life. Simple, but very powerful. Simple, but very powerful powerful hallelujah last scripture we're going to read this morning it's in Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 to verse 24 amen hallelujah in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 to 24 says but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have been heard, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, number one, put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. Hallelujah. Put off the old man. which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Put off the old man, the old way of thinking. Put off your past, your mistakes, all those things. Put them off. Switch off. Verse 23, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed. You're becoming a new creation. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans 12 verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the process. That's how you get rid of the old so that the new can come in. That's the process of transformation will help you. This is the word of God for you and me today. 
The key to getting all, getting rid of the old, the key not to go back in the past is to renew your way you think, is to renew, to be transformed by the renew of your mind. How do you get rid of your past? By renewing your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray somebody receive this today. You get rid of your past by renewing your mind. And you renew your mind with the word of God. You begin to believe what God says. And God will give you the grace to apply what he says. So you put off. Verse 23. You renew your, the, the spirit of your mind. Verse 24. That you put on the new man. New creation. The new man. You put on the new man. Which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Put off, renew, put on. I was going to say that's simple, but it's not. Put off, renew, put on the new. Put on Christ. Put it on Christ. To put on Christ, you have to put off the old nature. How? By being transformed in the renew of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You renew your mind with the word of God. You read the word of God. You meditate on the word of God. You believe the word of God. And God gives you the grace to apply the word of God in your life. That's the key. That's what we're talking about today. You believe the word. Believe the word. Though you've fallen seven times. Though you've fallen many, many times. Though you have been struggling many, many times. God still sees you in Jesus Christ. For when he died, your flesh was crucified. Hallelujah. Yes, my sister. With God, all Things are possible. You have to believe. You have to believe. Keep believing. Don't give up in your believing. God wants you to continue to believe. Hallelujah. There's no way. Don't give up no matter how many times you fall. No matter how many times you fall, don't give up. Amen. We really, really, really have to focus on this. We really, really somehow, we have to believe what God says more. So with, with that, as Sister Ruth was saying, we're going to read the last scripture in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Amen. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, because this is a, it's a very good context. And I thank you, Sister Ruth, for that. I didn't have that planned in my scriptures today. But thank God for you, for your life. We need to believe what we, what we read. Nothing is new in these scriptures. But it has to be, we have to become what we believe. Verse 25, Matthew chapter 20, Matthew 19, verse 25, in closing. When, verse 25 to 26, in closing, when his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But, verse 26, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. If you believe, all things are possible. No matter how many times you fall. No matter the issues in your life. No matter the pain. No matter the hurt. Believe what God says. And ask him to give you the grace. To apply what he says. Thus you become a new creation. Amen. Thank you for watching today. 
this study will be put on YouTube later. By the way, some of you are going to be watching the video. When it's put on the YouTube later, please share the video. Just bless people with the video, whether on Facebook, Gospel Rock, or on YouTube. Don't forget to click the, the like button and the bell so that whenever we're live, you can know that we're live and you can participate. May God bless you. Have an amazing Sunday, okay? In His grace, don't forget, hold on to Him no matter what. Amen.